Hello and welcome. My name is Dan Vega and today we're going to look at Visual Studio Code. In this tutorial we're going to look at the brand new free cross-platform lightweight editor that was released by Microsoft. And there's no need to adjust your volume. I did use the words free, cross-platform, and Microsoft in the same sentence. So what are we waiting for? Let's jump on in. So Microsoft just held their developer conference a couple weeks ago. It was called Build 2015 in San Francisco. And out of that came one of their big announcements, which was to release um, Visual Studio Code, which is, as I said before, a free cross-platform, meaning it will run on Microsoft Windows and Linux, lightweight editor. The important thing to note here is that it is a lightweight editor. It is not a Visual Studio replacement. It's not a full-blown IDE for the Mac and Linux, but it is a very nice lightweight editor, similar, uh, at least in my experience, right off the bat to those of, say, Sublime or Brackets or even Atom. Um, it's a really nice lightweight editor. So let's just jump on in and... and what we're going to do today is install it and then just go through a quick overview of how to use the editor. So first off, I'll throw a couple of links in the comments below, but uh, Build 2015, as I said, was the conference that this came out of. And there's actually a bunch of recordings uh, from this conference, so I'll go ahead and include links to that as well. But for Visual Studio Code, you want to head over to code.visualstudio.com. And if you click on the docs, you'll right away be thrown into a setup. And for me, I'm running Mac OS X Yosemite here, so I want to go ahead and set this up on Mac. So right away it says download Visual Studio Code, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And the instructions then say to double click on the VS Code OS X.zip to expand the contents. And finally, what we want to do is we want to drag that app into the Applications folder, so it'll be available in Launchpad and and Spotlight, um, it'll be available on our machine. So let's do that first. We're going to go ahead and double click on that. And now I have this folder expanded. Here's our app file. We just want to go ahead and drag this into applications. That little ding tells me we're good. So if we wanted to, we could launch this from Spotlight just by going to Visual Studio Code. Uh, I'm not going to launch that just yet. Uh, I also want to jump into Launchpad to show that it should be in here. So now it's in here. We can actually drag this into our dock and we can launch it from there now. So if we wanted to, we can launch it from there as well. One other thing I'd like to do is um, there is a way to go ahead and add this and be able to launch this and have command line integration. So this is really important to be able to launch, file, you know, open a file or open a folder straight from the command line. So here's the tip, if you copy this info and it says throw it in your bash RC file, um, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, I've already done that. So I want to just show you uh, opening a file in a folder from the command line. So let's look at, uh, let's jump into, I have a dev folder and a PHP. So if we want to open a folder, we can open the contents now. We can just say code and then the dot just says open this location. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, yes, we're going to go ahead and allow that because we know what it is. So there it is. It opened up. Um, just like any other application, if we just hit the X here, uh, we'll still see that it's still running. So we want to make sure we close down this properly. Uh, we can also open up a specific folder. So if we want to code and then the folder name, that will open up this folder. So there's that. Um, finally, let's go into this. I actually just want to open up this WP content folder for for just the, the examples that we're going to run through here today. So I have basically my WordPress uh, blog that's in here and uh, I just want to look at some different files in here. So, oh, whoops, I, I CD'd into that, my bad. So we want to code WP content. So that'll open us up in here. Okay, so now that we kind of were able to open a file or open a folder from the command line, let's start to just take a look around and, and see what's here and see how to use different things. So 
Um, the first thing we're going to notice is we have this dark theme that we can change. So if we go into, uh, I think it is view theme, we can go ahead and change this up if we like. On Mac, there seems to be only two, the dark and the light right now. In Windows, there's a, I think it's like a high contrast one. So there is a different option on Windows. Um, here on the Mac, I just have the two. So I guess really whatever, whatever you're most comfortable with. Um, here in the middle, this is the editor. Uh, this is where we're going to be editing our files. Uh, there's a status bar uh, on the bottom that has a couple different things. Uh, when you have a when you have something open, so let's just open a file here. Uh, it'll tell you where you are in the file, basically line and column, um, and it'll also tell you what language it is. And then you can kind of switch the language from here if you needed to. And there's also a little happy face here where you can provide some feedback about Visual Studio Code. So that's nice. Uh, and then there's some more info over here about displaying warnings and kind of the Git integration, but we won't look at that right now. So we have the editor, we have the status bar, and then we have our sidebar over here and our view bar over here. And the view bar kind of you'll see as we start to get into like if we have git integration or if we have multiple files that have changed the view the, the view bar just kind of gives us a few extra views and kind of notifications as to what's going on with the files that we have open and then finally we have this sidebar here and this is kind of our explorer if you will where all of our fo folders and files are and we also have some different things that we can do within this sidebar or slash explorer um, so one thing we can do right off the bat too is we can actually hide the sidebar using uh, on the Mac uh, command B whoops I think I just split the editor um, so we'll just go back there uh, so toggle sidebar so again I'm just gonna do this from the keyboard now command B so that kind of shows and hides the sidebar so again, we have files open here. If we were to go ahead and change something, actually, let's look at this. So when we open files, you'll see this working files has some files on it. These are all the files that are open. So even if uh, we go ahead and let's see, uh, command W to close it, it's still open over here. Uh, we just kind of took away which one we were looking at, but they're still open. So if you want to fully close the file, you can close it from over here. If we go ahead and make a change to a file, you'll see that some stuff happened over here. One, this next to advanced cache, there's like a dot on it. It means that something has changed here. And it says one unsaved file over here. Uh, you can do some, you can do operations to all of your working files. So if we wanted to close all we could, if you wanted to save all we could, I'm gonna go ahead and close all and not save. So those are the working files. It kind of shows you everything that's open. So let's jump into our theme here. I think we have some in header. So that's really um, opening a file. Again, we looked at opening a file from the command line. As you would expect, you can open from here. You can open some recent files. Uh, you can open a folder. Um, that's just pretty standard stuff. Now what we can do too is we can also split this. So if we have two files that we wanted to work on at the same time, we can go ahead and hit this icon and now we have header.php on this side and that side so if we click on this side this is the side that I'm on maybe I want to look at what footer.php has so now on this side I have my header on this side I have my footer and you'll see they both have little close icons so if I wanted to just close this header I could and now I'm back into kind of a single view mode so that's really nice being able to have a split editor um, over in the Explorer, there are also some pretty cool things that we can do. So obviously, um, if just like the working file had these little icons here, if we wanted to create a new file or a new folder, we could do so from here. Uh, this collapse will do just that. It'll kind of collapse that view for you. So let's see here as we're in here. Also, if you right click, uh, there is a couple options here. So one reveal in Finder uh, on a PC, I'm, I'm guessing this would be reveal on Explorer, I think it is. So it just kind of shows you where that file is. Also, you can open in Council. This would just open the file in case you had to, in case you wanted to be able to run some kind of command line utility on it. 
in Windows, obviously, this would open in DOS uh, or a command prompt. Um, but they also have this awesome little feature called Select for Compare. So let's do this. Let's close this one. So in a WordPress, we have different themes, right? In this particular one, we have this is the, the theme that I'm using, the flat theme. And obviously, I've made a ton of changes. I think one change, let's see, let's find something that's really changed. I'm guessing um, the header has changed, right? So let's look at, so let's say, let's select this for compare. And then let's just compare it to something else. So in 2015, there's also a header. So let's right click on this and say, compare with header. So now we've taken two files just that were on our local hard drive. And there's a really nice utility in here to compare those two. So we can see like the diffs. Uh, you can jump back and forth through them. Uh, switch to an inline. Don't, you know, there's some different options here. But that's really cool being able to just write inside of Visual Studio Code compare two files. So I thought that was a really nice feature. Um, next up is the command palette. If you've ever worked with Sublime Text, this should look really familiar to you. Uh, you can get to it. Um, I believe it's in go to, I'm sorry, here it is, um, by using the command P or view command palette. So I'm going to hit command P here. And again, just kind of like a sublime, these are all the different commands that we can run. So we can run them by, by selecting them here, or we can start to type and it'll show us the different options that we have. And I also like to use this. Um, I like that they show you the keyboard shortcut in here. So if you're looking, if you don't remember what a keyboard shortcut is, this is usually one of the easier ways to go find it. So I find this really helpful from time to time. Uh, there's also some great find and replace slash search options in here. If we just want to look in a particular file, so if we're in a file and we click this little icon over here, let's jump down here. Oh, why is this not working? Um, so I just hit uh, Command F and that brought that up. Uh, but this is basically our find and replace for this particular file that we're working on. So we could find something or we could find and replace. It also has some options. So this is match case, match the whole world, word. And you can also use regular expressions in your find. So that's really nice. Uh, but let's say we didn't want to do it for a particular file. Maybe we wanted to do it for this whole project or this set of folders that we're working on. If you click on this over here on the left, that will bring us into our search. And again, you'll see kind of some of the same options here. But we can jump into, maybe we just want to search like a specific file type. Or maybe we just wanted to look in a specific folder or an exclude a folder. Um, there's some great options here for searching and replacing uh, that you would hope to, to have in a particular project. So that's really great as well. The next icon down is Git integration. This particular project I'm on doesn't have a Git repository. You can initialize one from here, or if you already have one, uh, it'll pick it up and give you a bunch of information on your project. And has really nice Git integration right off the bat, so that's great too. Then there's also a debugger. Uh, we're not going to get into this today, but hopefully in a later screencast, we'll look at an actual project and debugging right from Visual Studio Code. So that's that. Um, what I want to look at next is if you go into code, preferences, user settings. Uh, this is, this again should look very familiar if you've worked with anything like Sublime before. This is our default settings and then this is our settings.json. So any, this is a JSON file, so any setting that we put in here will override the default settings. Uh, so if we wanted to change the um, line numbers. So if we wanted to say that line numbers should be turned off, if we put that line over here and change it to false, that would override our default settings. And the nice thing is you can go through all of these settings. Uh, the cool thing is if you highlight over it, or hover over it, it kind of gives you like a tooltip of what that setting is used for. Um, so that's really nice. So that's kind of changing uh, settings. Uh, what I want to look at now too, let's go ahead and hit uh, Command N. This will start a new file. Let's go ahead and close these other ones that I have open here. And let's see, let's, there we go. All right, um, what I wanted to show you was another thing. So what real editor is a real editor unless you can use emojis and symbols? 
So let's jump open here and we can go ahead and insert emojis right into our text. Let's just hmm. all right I don't know why that's not going in <laughs> let's try this one more time there we go sorry about that anyways just a cool little feature I thought of the the editor itself you can all insert a whole bunch of different emojis and symbols um I think that's all I really wanted to get to. Uh, there's go to symbol, go to definition, go to line. You know, these are pretty much basic things that you would expect from an editor. Uh, again, I this isn't a full blown IDE, but if you if you get into um, in any type of, of .NET development or JavaScript development in Node, it has some really great IntelliSense support. As far as other languages go, I think they ha there's a document online that kind of shows you, but they have like a different layer of support. So they have a huge list of languages that they will support, meaning you get some kind of basic support, whether it be color coding, syntax highlighting, that kind of stuff. But there are also, you know, other languages like .NET and Node that have full like IntelliSense support and, and whatnot, and they hope to expand that in the future. So I'll try to get a link to that in there too. So I think that's it for today. Um, please hit that thumbs up below if you like this video. Also, feel free to leave me any comments or suggestions. My plan is to go ahead and create a video that shows off creating, running, slash debugging a .NET or a Node.js app. Um, but I'm open to suggestions here on what you wanted to see out of this next. So please drop me a, drop me a comment and let me know what you liked, didn't like, and we'll try and cover it in the next one. Uh, that's all I got for today. Have a great day, and thank you for watching.